In this segment, we'll discuss the practical matters of debriding and dressing burns for outpatient treatment. Now, of course, superficial burns are treated with non-narcotic pain medications and moisturizer, and full thickness burns are admitted to the hospital for evaluation and possible operative management. So this is really a dissection on how to manage partial thickness burns. Partial thickness injuries are very painful, especially once debrided, because the underlying dermis is sensitive to the circulating air. Oxycodone and Tylenol are good choices for pain control. If you need IV pain medications for initial wound care, it probably means the patient will continue to require IV pain medication, and therefore, admission. Remember that most parents are ill-prepared to take on wound care, range of motion, and administration of pain medications from the get-go. Admitting kids overnight is often the right thing to do, both for the patient and the parents. Debridement can usually be accomplished with a pair of small scissors and a pair of forceps, both of which are available in suture removal kits. Using sterile scissors, make a small cut in the blister to drain the fluid. Remove as much of the dead and sloughing tissue as possible, picking up dead skin with your forceps and cutting it as close as possible to the skin with your scissors to expose the viable skin underneath. Intact blisters, if small, can be left alone. The perfect examples are blisters at the tip of the fingers. They're difficult to dress and may actually hinder activity if unroofed and dressed. We believe that the biological dressing effect of leaving blisters intact is probably overrated. More likely, they'll just rupture at home and then be inadequately debrided. For example, a patient with a blistered palm may not use that hand or do range of motion exercises out of fear of damaging the blister, only to have it debrided when they come in to see us in clinic. That's very counterproductive. The next step is a gentle cleaning of the wound. No scrubbing is necessary. This can be easily accomplished with warm water, non-perfumed soap, and gentle cleansing with a washcloth. Ask the patient to take a deep breath and gently wipe loose, devitalized tissue with the wet washcloth in a single motion in a single direction. Always reassess the burn when it's fully debrided and cleaned to be sure that it still seems appropriate for outpatient management. Instruct patients that they do not need to wear gloves at home and can use regular warm tap water for wound care. It's now time to dress the wound. Please keep it simple. The dressing should allow for a full range of movement, be loose enough to allow for some swelling of the wound, and be simple enough that the patient or the patient's caregivers can replicate it easily. Dressings should not have to be changed more than once a day. The purpose of a dressing is to prevent gross contamination of the wound, to provide some antimicrobial activity, and to keep the tissue moist for healing and range of motion. Remember that topical antibiotics are all that's necessary. There is no role for systemic antibiotics in these patients. The primary bacteria that initially colonize a burn are skin flora, primarily staphylococci and streptococci. Later in the process, gram-negative bacteria colonize the wound as well. So the best antibiotics are the most broad spectrum. Shallow partial thickness burns can be treated with bacitracin alone, since the chance for invasive gram-negative infection is vanishingly low. Most deep partial and full thickness burns, however, are treated with silver sulfadiazine, which has the added benefit of being soothing to the skin and requiring once daily application. Most patients with sulfa allergies do not have a reaction to silvadine. You can prove this using a test dose over a non-burned area. Applying silver sulfadiazine has a lot in common with putting frosting on a cake. Using a tongue depressor, scoop a generous amount of silvadine from the container and spread it thickly over the skin. The other way to accomplish this is to spread silver sulfadiazine onto the inner dressing layer, then apply it to the patient, then wrap with sterile gauze and tape in place. We often advocate the use of multi-day silver impregnated dressings. In terms of activity, encourage patients to resume normal activities as best they're able. Narcotic pain medications cause drowsiness and should not be used during the day or when patients are driving. In addition, burns are not fractured bones, so you don't need crutches, canes, or other assistive devices. Favoring or not using an extremity only leads to disuse and stiff, non-functional extremities. Perhaps the most important part of any outpatient burn care is making sure that patients have good follow-up to be sure that they're meeting all four domains of good burn care. Remember, those four domains are wound care, pain control, physical and occupational therapy, and psychosocial support. 
our institution has developed a fast-track program where discharge-eligible patients are transferred from the emergency department to an acute care ward for wound care, teaching, and physical therapy before being discharged home.